In this video, let's learn about the development of the nasal cavities. The nasal cavities are formed by the extension of the nasal pits. So these are the nasal pits. And these pits are in open communication with the stomatoderm. This is the stomatoderm. The frontonasal process is present in between the pits. So you can see the frontonasal process here. Soon the medial and lateral processes fuse and form a partition between the pit and the stomatoderm. This is the foregut. In this diagram, these are the anterior nares. And this is the oral cavity. Soon the medial and the lateral nasal processes fuse together and they form a partition between the pit and the stomatoderm. This partition is called as the primitive palate. So this is the primitive palate. And this primitive palate is derived from the frontonasal process. Now, these nasal pits deepen down to form the nasal sacs. Coming to this diagram, this is the anterior nair and it deepens to form the nasal sac. The nasal sacs expand both dorsally and caudally. The dorsal part of the sac, at first it is separated from the stomatoderm by a thin membrane that is called as the bucconasal membrane. So this is the bucconasal membrane. This is the developing tongue. For a video on development of tongue, you can click on the i button and this is the pharynx. The bucconasal membrane is also called as nasal fin. This bucconasal membrane, it soon breaks down. So this is the dorsal side and the ventral side. So now the nasal sac has a ventral orifice that opens onto the face that is the anterior nair or the external nair and a dorsal orifice that opens into the stomatoderm. So you can see the posterior opening in this diagram. After breaking off the bucconasal membrane, so this is the posterior opening. This is the oral cavity and the developing tongue. This is the pharynx, the anterior nair or the external nair and this forms the nasal cavity and the green color is the primitive palate the two nasal sacs are widely separated from one another by the frontonasal processes later the frontonasal process becomes progressively narrower and this narrowing of the frontonasal processes leads to the enlargement of the nasal cavities and brings them closer as you can see it in this diagram these are the nasal pits and the frontonasal processes becomes narrower and it leads to the enlargement of the nasal cavities and brings them closer. These are the nasal cavities. This green color is the primitive palate. And this is the buccal membrane. You can see the disappearance of the buccal membrane here and these are the frontonasal processes. These frontonasal processes become more thinner and they form the nasal septum. The ventral part of the nasal septum is attached below to the primitive palate and more posteriorly the septum is first attached to the buccal membrane but it disappears and finally the nasal septum becomes attached to the primitive palate. The nasal cavities are separated from the mouth by the development of the palate. For a video on the development of palate, you can click on the i button. The lateral wall of the nose is derived on the each side from the lateral nasal processes and the nasal concave appears as the elevation on the lateral wall of each nasal cavity. So afterwards the lateral wall of nose is appears and the nasal concave. These are the elevations on the lateral wall of the nose and the original olfactory play cords from the olfactory epithelium. They form the roof of the nasal cavities. So the olfactory play cords form the olfactory epithelium.
For a video on the taste pathway, you can click on the I button. And now coming to the clinical correlation. There may be atresia of the nasal cavity at the external nares or at the posterior nasal apertures or in the cavity proper. This may be unilateral or bilateral. Very rarely, there may be total absence of the nasal passages. Congenital defects in the cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone may lead to a communication between the cranial cavity and the nose. So here they will be the ethmoid bone. The congenital defects in the cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone may lead to a communication between the cranial cavity and the nasal cavity. The nasal septum may not be in the midline, that is, it may be deflected to one side or the septum may be absent. And sometimes the nasal cavity may communicate with the mouth. So these are the clinical anomalies. Now let's summarize. The frontonasal processes form the dorsum and the tip of the nose. The nasal pits form the origin of the nostrils. The nasal sacs are the elongations of the nasal pit from the nasal cavity. The rupture of the bucconasal membrane forms the posterior nair or the coenae. These are the posterior nares or these are called as the coenae. So guys, this is all about the development of the nasal cavities. If you like this video, do subscribe to my channel. And do look at some of my recent videos and playlists.